Hey guys, Malo here, and welcome back to another Raid School video. Now that we've covered all the base mechanics and tactics for each encounter, we can get a little more in-depth to make the individual and team overall better. Hopefully. Links to the other chapters will be in the description down below, as well as at the end of this video. Right now there will be something in the top right hand corner of the screen if you don't know how the gauntlet encounter works. This section will be covering how to solo a plate in the gauntlet encounter in both the add control part as well as hitting the arrows. Now let's get started. Let's start with add control. As we know there will be 5 sets of enemies that come out of each door on a single plate side. So that means you can choose which door they all come out. You can solo any of the plate locations by standing right next to one of the burners on that side in front of one of the spawn doors. The main gist is just to stand in one spot and shoot four sets of adds when they spawn. The reason why you want to stand in one spot is because if you move too much out to one side, then the adds behind you can see and they'll just come over to make a very, very bad day. That's just not cool. If you're a Warlock or Titan, you have it easy. Warlocks should use healing rifts, and Titans should use rally barricades to help themselves stay alive. Hunters, you will have less of a safety margin, but you can go ahead and solo the plate. You'll need to make sure that you do not run out of ammo when the adds come out, especially on prestige mode. After you clear the four sets on one door, then all you need to do is turn around and kill the last set that will be roaming around the plate area. Now while you're dealing with the four sets from one door, the fifth set will be shooting and lobbing grenades over to one of the other plate locations to kind of attack one of your unsuspecting teammates. So you need to be as fast as possible, or just tell your team, hey, I can't control my people, can you? Then just kind of keep doing what you do. The reason why you'd want to solo a side like this is because it makes it as easy as possible on you. Because it's always the worst when you have enemies coming from two sides on you and pinching the crap out of you. It's just not good, and it probably doesn't smell well afterwards. Anyways, now soloing the arrows. The loadout you'll need is a fast dish, fire rate gun, and a rocket. I personally use Coldheart or Uriel's Gift, and my trusty Cluster Rocket. As we know, the runner won't be able to see the red ring for his callouts unless a person is standing on the plate for the arrows in question. So that's step one stand on the plate. Step two is to listen for your call out. And step three is to shoot the arrows. I know, I know, that's so hard. Anyways, most of you probably know how to hit the middle and something else arrows, but not the split. But I'll get to the split in a sec. The reason why you can hit two arrows at once is because Bungie gives somewhat of a leeway when shooting the arrows. You have about a quarter of a second so if you use an auto weapon, then you can hit the two neighboring arrows. But you don't have enough time to hit the split. So here's where the rocket comes into play. All you need to do is shoot the rocket at either the top or bottom arrow and then swap weapons and hit the last one. Now I highly recommend having a slower velocity rocket, but all I have for this clip is the curtain call. I believe that's what it's called. So. In order to do it with that, you need to be standing at the back of the plate. And that will bring us to the end of this video. It's not too difficult to solo arrows, however it is a little more difficult if you're doing the running tactic with just one person covering a runner. So good luck with that, and try and keep your rockets. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video helped, please leave a thumbs up, and if you think it could help a friend, please share it as well. This video might be able to help LFG run a little bit smoother and get raid runs down from a couple hours for completion to an hour or less. If you think I've missed something, or you have a better way of doing this, please share it in the comments down below. I will be checking them. I would love to see your feedback. The next section I'll be covering before Curse of Osiris will be Chapter 4.2, How to Do the Dogs in Less Than One Minute. I hope to see you guys there, and until the next time, you do you, peace out.